Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at how we can make this interesting shape, but also how we can make it 3D printable with moving parts. So this object is actually a timer, but it's got a lot of features that make it interesting to 3D design. But as an additional part to it, it has this rotating section. And as this is a channel that does focus on 3D design for 3D printing, I thought it'd be cool to have a look at how to make that so that it's 3D printable. So let's get going. So we'll start this with Shift and A and we're going to bring in our cylinder. Now I want this to be a bit smoother so let's go for 128 and then we're going to set our sizes. So this has actually got in real life a radius of about 75 millimeters. So I want 75 but because this is a radius and we've measured the diameter I'm going to divide it by two. So we've got that there and then we're going to up the depth so this is actually about 30 millimeters deep. So we've got our object here. Then I want the rotating part. So what I'm going to do is select that, Shift and D to make it identical, and then I'm going to scale this up a bit. So let's firstly go into vertex mode, Shift and Z, select those bottom vertices, and G and Z those up. So we've got that to about the right height, which is there. And I'm going to go into object mode, come into downward view, and I'm going to press S. In fact, I might actually demonstrate this from an angle. So I'm going to press S and then Shift and Z and what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to change the size of this by scaling it but it's not going to change it in the Z axis so it's not going to make it any taller. So I'm going to go to about there I think so that will do but you'll notice we've kept the top level exactly the same and where we put the bottom at the same because of that Shift and Z. Now we're going to sort out this curve along the top before we start dealing with these two bits and make this so that we can theoretically rotate them or if we 3D print we can rotate them. So that's Shift and A, Mesh and I'm going to bring in a UV sphere. Now this is going to be tiny so we're going to up the radius a lot to somewhere around there, just a bit wider than the object and I'm going to up both of these to 128 so that they're in line with what we've got on the rest of the object. Then S and Z to scale that down to the sort of curve we want. I think I want somewhere about there. Nothing too exaggerated. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode. Just grab the bottom ones and then G and then Z that down. Not really too worried about those other than the fact that we've got this curved shape. And then G and Z somewhere to about there. Maybe this is too exaggerated. Let's S and Z that a little bit. So about there and then we're just going to make it so that it's not breaching the top so you can see we're getting to the top there without going through it I might have to change the size of some of these bits a little bit but we'll do that as we come to it okay so how are we going to do this right what we need to do is create something where we only want the bits where this and our sphere intersect so we can use an intersection boolean for that and we'll talk through what we're going to do and we'll do that in two ways depending on what sort of level you're at and if you're a beginner or not. So I'm gonna select here, which is my outer object, add a modifier, Boolean, and I want an intersection Boolean, and then I'm gonna click on my sphere, which has got this curved part to it. And now you'll see if we isolate this part in the middle with forward slash, we've got this nice slightly domed shape. Now the other way to do this, which is actually slightly quicker, you don't have to come in here and fiddle around with things, is that if you go to edit and preferences, and come here and type in ball, you will get ball tools. Now, if you're activating for this for the first time, you won't have this set with display as wireframe. I would click that on. Let me just talk about this. I'm gonna leave it off and we'll talk about why. So what we can do with this is click our sphere. That's the object that we want to affect the other one. Shift select the one that we want to be affected and press control and asterisk on our number pad. This has created the shape that we want. We've still got our slightly domed shape but the bit that's slightly annoying about this is our sphere now displays as a bounding box. We can't actually see the shape. I don't really like that. I like to know where my exact shape is. So back to preferences and ball tools. If I click that display as wireframe, what that is now going to do, oh, do remember to save your preferences if you don't have autosave preferences on. We can select our sphere that's providing our dome shape, shift select the object that we want to have affected, control and asterisk, and you'll notice that now we've got this wireframe instead and that shows us exactly where the object is. I'm gonna hide that, but you can see what we've got here. So now we've got our two objects, both sharing the same curved shape, which is exactly what we want to have this nice smooth transition. However, 
realistically, this is not going to work if you 3D print this. They're going to be, well, overlapping basically, because as you 3D print, your 3D prints generally get a slight little bit of increase in size. So we need to take that into account and make a gap between these two. And that would also be there on the real object because otherwise it can't rotate. So what I'm gonna do is take this central object. I'm going to apply my Boolean. So now this is actually just the geometry and I'm gonna shift and D to make a duplicate of that. And we're gonna subtract this from this inner part. Now, what I can do with this is change the dimensions by a known amount. So what I want to do is change this in the X and Y coordinates by a fixed amount and that's gonna depend on the printer. So I'm gonna click and drag down to be affecting both of them. And then I'm going to, let's say, add about a 0.2 millimeter gap on both sides. So a 0.4 millimeter gap together. So plus 0.4, hit enter, and then that's now increased in size. I'm also just gonna S and Z to give it a bit more space on the Z axis. So we get a slightly more reliable Boolean because we don't have this trying to fit on the same spot. Though it is slightly different now because of that change in size anyway, but it's just worth doing. Click the object that we're gonna cut with, shift select the object that we want cut, and using ball tools, control and minus on the number pad, and then we can H that central object. We've now got this gap between them, so we'll be able to rotate it. Now, I might actually make this slightly larger because I don't just want this to fit on top of the object, but I want it to slide around it. So let's actually just change that to, let's say 75.6, just to give it a bit more width and a bit more room to move. So there we've got our outer object. Now at this point, we're gonna start fiddling around with this and changing some of the parts. So we are going to need to apply this. So I'm gonna click apply all. If you don't have these options to apply all, you can just click them one at a time, or you can just press control and A. So control and A, control and A. But if you do want to get these, just edit preferences and then come to modifier and click modifier tools and that will give you these options to just quickly click apply all and it's all done. So looking at this original object we have a slight bevel around the edge. Now to make this work we want the scale to be correct with everything as one otherwise it will be slightly off only by a little bit in this instance but enough that we worry about it. So control and A scale I'm going to come to edge. I'm actually going to come to this edge here and this edge here, which are at the moment having a bit of an effect, they're gonna get in the way if I control, if I alt click here, control and B, they're gonna get in the way and cause problems. So what I'm gonna do is actually alt click there, alt click there, control and X to dissolve those to give me a bit of space to work with. Then I can alt click there, control and B. Oh, and we've got a slight problem. I'm guessing if I go into vertex mode, there's some overlapping vertices here. So if I press G, yep, we can see some overlapping vertices, which are a problem. That's why if I go into edge mode and select those and control and B, it's having this problem of making this horrendous mess. So two ways of sorting that. One, we can press M and then merge by distance. Or if you've got machine tools, just hit three and you can see we've removed a load of vertices there and that cleanup function is really nice. Now, if that doesn't work, but you have machine tools, what you need to do is come here, machine, and make sure that your clean option is selected. So make sure that is on. Then select those, control and B, let's put a bevel to about there. I'm gonna make that about 16, so it's nice and smooth, probably smoother than it needs to be. Press C to clamp it, and we've got that rounded portion to make that look nice and neat. We're also gonna have a slight bevel on the bottom as well, but not anywhere near as big. Next, we want our texturing that's gonna go around the outside here. And there's actually a bit of a gap between the top and where this starts. So edge mode, and we're gonna put in an edge loop with control and R, click, and put it up to here, and that's gonna act as the bounds of this texture, which is called knurling or knurling. I got told which one it was once when I did a video of this before. I think it was knurling. Then I need to set up the size of these parts. So I'm gonna control an R and I want to make this approximately square. So I'm gonna to go to about there and we've got that ready to go. 
Now this is going to use an add-on called Hard Ops. You can do it without Hard Ops, but it's just faster with Hard Ops. I'd really recommend you get it if you're intending on doing any hard surface modeling. It's got so many shortcuts and some things that you just can't do without it. I'd also recommend you get it with Box Cutter because it's discounted. There's a link in the description and there's a link to some other videos on Box Cutter so you can see what it does. I'm going to face mode and I'm just going to alt select all of these that I want to have this pattern on it. Then I don't want these perfectly touching. If I do this, all of this texture is going to be exactly touching one another. If I just show you this quickly, you can see that everything will be touching when we do that. And we don't want that. So what we're going to do is make sure there's a bit of a gap here. So what I'm going to do is press I to inset everything and then I again and now they're individually being inset, I'm just gonna add my gap that I want. So let's go to about there. Then I'm going to sort of explain what I just did. You're gonna press Q to bring up the hard ops menu and you're gonna press control while clicking on EM macro and that's going to enter into this knurling method. Now you could just leave this as being these spikes but realistically it's not like that. So what I'm gonna do is press F to make these flat and then if you hold control and move up and down you can change the size take your finger off control and you can deal with how much they stick out. It's really cool. So in and out to make them more or less tall, control to change the size of the flattened part. So control and move your mouse left and right to control the size of the inner part. I think I'm gonna go to about there and then click. So now we've got this sorted. It's looking pretty good. Once we've got that done, you're pretty much done with the object if you're not interested in 3D printing. This is gonna work fine, but I am gonna go through how to sort this out so that it is 3D printable. So if you want this to be 3D printable and this part to be held in place, what we need to do is make sure it's got something to interact with the internal part. So what I'm gonna do is go into edge mode here, control and R, scroll up to have two, and then click and escape to have them in the center. And then I'm gonna go into face mode, alt select. And all I want to do is press Q and then alt click on EM macro to push these inwards. So this is gonna be the bit that's gonna hold it in place compared to the other object. Then let's forward slash to come out of isolation mode. And we need to make sure that this interaction with this object sort of has something to hold it in place. Basically, this needs a groove. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select this object, shift and D, to make a duplicate, so we've got that here. Once we've got this duplicate, I'm gonna forward slash to isolate it, and we're gonna to have to exaggerate these sizes a little bit. So I'm just gonna go into face mode, G and Z that up by 0.2, or maybe three actually. So I'm just typing in 0.3, and then I'm gonna do the same thing along the bottom, G and Z, and then 0.3, but this time minus. And then I'm going to come to this internal part here, and just S, Shift and Z, so it doesn't change on the Z axis, and just bring it in a little bit more. Once I've done that, I can then take this, Shift select on the middle object, Control and minus, H to hide that, and we've now got this groove, but there'll be enough of a space for this part to be able to rotate around it, which is exactly what we want. Now let's apply this, and we're gonna to come to our final thing that we need to deal with, so let's just bring in a cube. If you're following this along, don't do this. I'm just using it to demonstrate something. So let's bring that there and then G and Y down to about there. And just to show this, again, not really doing this, I'm just gonna control and minus that out of that and then control and minus it out of that. So you can see what we've done here. We've got this gap that's gonna allow this to move and rotate around. It's a little bit bigger there because I just did it by eye, but that's not gonna cause a problem because, well, this is a round object, so we can't push in one side more than the other. But, well, how is this gonna get here? That's gonna be a really big problem. So we've got two options here on how we could do this. I'll just undo all of that. We could either cut this part in half, so it's been cut across here, and then we glue it together around the object, but that's gonna make a really nasty visible seam, so we don't want to do that. Instead, what I can do is actually just cut this object in half along this point, and we'd basically set the other part down on top and then glue this top portion on top of it. So I'm gonna shift A, mesh, and bring in a plane. Let's scale that up so it's bigger than the object. And then we need to make sure that this is going to have, again, a little bit of a gap 
so that when it expands slightly being 3D printed, it's going to rest at about the right size. This is going to be really down to your 3D printer. For me, I need a gap of about 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. You will end up getting to the point where you know what your 3D printer can do. So let's put that up so it's in the middle, so it's nice and neat. And we can cut this out after adding some thickness. So I'm going to add modifier and then add some thickness to this with a solidify modifier. So I can just do that and then cut it through. Except if I do that, there's no real guarantee that these bits are going to join up perfectly. So I'm going to add something in to make sure they join up. So I'm going to shift A, mesh, and bring in a cube. Let's scale that up a bit. And then we're going to just have a look at this in comparison to our plane. And then, right, let's click the cube, scale that down, G and Z that up in comparison to the plane. And we don't like these really extreme, perfectly flat shapes. In fact, let's S and Shift and Z to make that a bit bigger because it's very unlikely that they're gonna fit in. So what I'm gonna do is go to face mode, select that face and then S and just bring it in. So we've got this nice shape there and you'll see what this is gonna do in a second. So next thing we need to do is make this part of a plane. You can do this separately. I just find this is a quicker method. So I'm gonna select that, Shift select the plane Control and plus to add it together. And you'll notice that this is created or added this to the plane. Now, if you end up seeing something like this, so it looks like you've got both of them together, it's because you haven't clicked on the exact option there, which is gonna make this into just continually a plane. That's H tied that. Now we can add our solidify modifier. So add modifier and solidify. We don't want this going down really. I mean, you can do. I'm always used to thinking of it moving up and making it wider. So we're gonna turn this offset to one and I want this to be 0 0.2. Except for this looks horrible because we haven't applied the scale. Let's control an A and scale and that will fix that all. So there we go. Now we've got this plane. I'm gonna click on the plane, shift click on the center object, control and minus, we can click on the plane and H that, and now if I isolate this, you can see that we've got this hole in the center there. Now we do seem to have had a slight problem here where we've got an issue with our Boolean. If I click on fast, it will solve that, but this does seem to imply there's some overlapping vertices somewhere, so we're gonna to wanna to fix that before we come to 3D printing it. So what I'm gonna do is apply this. I'm gonna go into vertex mode, hit three, to remove any duplicate vertices of which there were multiples of them. And then I'm gonna press P and separate by loose parts. Now we've got these two objects, so let's G and Z that up. This one, which will nicely fit onto the other one. So if you think about this from a 3D printing point of view, you will print this part, that bit will nicely come in and sit on it, and then that bit will nicely come in and sit on that. And you've got your 3D printed part, but this bit can rotate around because it's sitting loose on it. So just a bit of fun there making an interesting object, but also looking at how we can turn this into something that works as a 3D printed reality. As always, if you found that useful, please do hit that like button. It really helps the video get shared around, which then grows the channel and that's really nice to see. Hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I will be throwing this blend file up on the Patreon. So if you want to have a look at that in a little bit more detail, or you just want to support the channel, or you want to get these videos a week ahead of time ad-free, head on over to the Patreon and join up. Have a great day, guys.